Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is going to be the update for the Easy Sork for Somerset. Now I know you've been anticipating this for quite some time and I know that PC got this first. So they've had Somerset for a couple weeks but it's now on console so now you can of course have it. Now there are some changes based on the previous setup to what there is now. However just bear in mind and this is a very important note. The original setup does still work fine. So if you want to add the monster set that I'm using on top of it. Because of course there are some new shinies with Somerset. That will still work just the way it did before and you don't have to change anything. However, if you want to push that a little bit further and make it even more nuts than it was before, hold on tight. You're going to love it. So, first of all, we're going to go into the stats. First of all, let's buff up. Make sure everything's running. Get a potion on. We are sitting on 43k max Magicka. That'll actually go to about 44, but I'll go over that as to how you can push that a little bit further. I'm missing a couple of traits. Uh, 961 mag recovery, 17.5k health, which is quite huge for Magicka uh, DPS, uh, 2.7k spell damage, and 58.6% crit. We are using 64 points all into Magicka. As you can see, we've got no health bonus there. We've just got the bonus from our flat passives. We are using the Thief Munder Stone for a very good reason, but I will get to that in the gear and in the rotation and all the rest of it. I can hear people screaming, you should use Apprentice and you should use this and you should use that. No, I've tried everything. I've done countless weeks of testing and the Thief comes out on top for this particular setup because it's very, very important to one of our major attacks. We must crit it as much as possible. Um, the Minor Slayer bonus is actually from one of our sets. Uh, we are a stage 4 vampire to make sure that we get um, less damage taken when we're low health and of course a recovery bonus but I will go over that in a moment. Don't worry about the fire damage, I'll explain how to avoid that, it's absolutely fine. I'm stage 4 vampire for everything, it's really really good as long as you're not stupid and standing in the red stuff all the time. Um, max health, max magicka. Um, food instead of witch mothers because we don't need witch mothers. Witch mothers has a little bit less health and a little bit less magicka so your damage will be less and your health will be less but it does have high recovery. We do not need high recovery. If you're a newer player and you're leveling this kind of build up, fair enough, that will help you. But when you're maxed out or even if you're halfway through your CPs, maybe 300, 400 or something like that, you won't need Witch Mothers at all as long as you follow the rotation properly. It's a very simple rotation. There's some very important points to make in there or to note. So just pay attention to it and you'll be just fine. You won't run out of Magicka. The only time you'll run out of Magicka is if you're doing something stupid like spamming or over spamming shields or doing what I do on the live stream sometimes and read the chat and just run around spamming buffs unnecessarily. That will happen. But if you're just following your rotation, you'll do stuff like this and look how much magic I get back. I'm not going to run out. I've just hit him and I'm nearly full again. Um, I mean, he's small, so there's a skill. Look, magic is full all the time. That happens in big, big combat situations as well. Dungeons trials a lot, especially if Ellie Drain's present because you just can't run out. Anyway, let's get into the skills and start making some sense out of this. Okay, now I'm going to go over the skills. These are going to be in detail. I'm going to show you where they come from, what they do, and why they're there. If you're new, I would not advise you to skip this. If you aren't new, then it's at your own risk. I'll probably go over some hints and tips and tricks and stuff that really works really well with certain abilities that you may or may not know. So if you do, again, it's at your own risk. Don't go screaming in the chat saying you missed something when I said it already. But let's go from the beginning. First of all, Inner Light, this is very, very important. This comes from the Mages Guild skill line. You need to pick up that Mages Guild quest and um, that will open up the skill line and then you can pick up Law Books. When you pick up Law Books, you will level up and at level two, I believe, you unlock this. Now morph it into Inner Light specifically and while this is slotted on your bar, you will gain maximum Magicka increase of 5%. So however much magic you've got, it will increase it by 5%. It will also give you Major Prophecy. As you can see, it will give you 2191 extra spell crit. Now I know that's confusing, it probably won't make a lot of sense because it's in digits instead of uh, percentage, but that's 10%. So that contributes to our critical chance, not damage, chance. It's very important. We want our chance to be fairly high so that our off balance heavy attacks have a better chance of critting more often because that can drastically increase your DPS. It's insane. Anyway, we'll get to the off balance stuff later. You need this on your bar first of all. You never need to activate it. You just leave it on your bar and that's it. If you activate this with certain passives, which I'll get to later, you can get additional damage from light attacks, but that's not going to be relevant for this particular build. So put that on your bar first of all. And we're going to use Shot Clench. This one is in the Destruction Staff skill line. It says Destructive Clench because that's what it's called. Morph it to this particular one. But depending on what um, 
type of element you're using depends on what type of damage it does and how it affects it now this particular one is lightning because we're using two lightning staves and or we're using one on the front bar at least this will hit the target with a single target um, ability so shock damage up front and it will splash and hit multiple targets nearby now this can also stun the target if they're not immune to it and it will also um, apply a damage over time lightning effect to them as well now this is a very very strong ability not just because it hits hard to start with or because it has a dot but also because it's lightning damage it can apply a concussion effect if you're lucky now concussion is a status effect from lightning if you have a chance to proc it basically there'll be a little uh, light blue symbol on the buff or debuff counter of the boss or the target and it will cause minor vulnerability increasing the damage you do or anybody else does to that target by eight percent during its duration if it runs out then it's gone again but also while it is concussed if you hit it with wall of elements which i'm going to get to in a moment you can actually knock it off balance as well but again don't panic we're going to get to that just just bear in mind that this does lightning damage or shock damage and that can apply a status effect which gives us another bonus later on so you want this it's really really strong uh hardened ward this is our main shield ability this is in our daedric summoning abilities or skill line rather you may need to have some of these to start with so if you're leveling this up you want a pet or something on your bar they are annoying but i know some people like them you need something like this on your bar so you can level up to here to unlock this once you've got it there's your damage shield and what this does is this will coat your health so that you take damage in the shield instead of in the face now obviously when you activate this it actually gets stronger so it's a 16k shield there more magical you have by the way the stronger it is and you can see now it's a 20k shield so while it's active it's actually stronger if you have pets this shields them as well but for yourself it's a really really powerful shield it starts off looking like it's 16k or so almost 17 but when it's on you absorb 23 percent additional damage so it's really really nice um Bound Aegis is the next one. This is also in the same skill line. It's the last one you unlock. It takes bloody ages to get to, so make sure you put some of these on your bar while you're leveling up. Once you get it, morph it to Bound Aegis. Now, this one has been changed in Somerset and has confused a few people. While it is on your bar, you have an increased 8% max magicka and you gain minor ward and minor resolve, increasing your spell and physical resistance. It's a very small bonus. It's like 1.3k resist or so, but it's still relevant anyway it will help you it increases your survivability if you like it's almost just over two percent uh mitigation which is quite nice and also the max magic is very very valid you'll notice here that we have eight percent max magic increase here and a five percent increase here max magic and max stamina were altered in the way that they contribute heavily towards your light and heavy attacks now they didn't used to it used to be spell damage and weapon damage but now your max stats magicka or stamina now improve your lights and heavies a lot more so the more we have the better if you can work that way you want to balance it out still but the more of magicka we can have the better now there is one more thing that changed this if you notice if i toggle it or turn it on it runs out very very quickly it's gone now before you used to have to turn it on and have it on both bars otherwise you'd lose it now it stays with you all the time what it does if you activate it is it gives you this bonus at the top here it will give you three seconds of any damage you take while blocking is mitigated by a further 20 percent so your your block when you when you block that's 50 percent straight away if you have other bonuses and buffs etc then you can make your block even stronger and if you activate this it can make it even stronger and if you do it inside of a shield as well you can see where we're going there. This the damage shield hits first, then your block mitigates those of damage. It's really, really powerful. So it's situational. If you're in trouble and you're going to take a massive hit and you're in real deep shit and there's nothing else you can do, you've already got your shield up, just block and put this on. You take a lot, lot less damage. Emergency situations only because otherwise it's expensive if you spam it. But that's what it now does. It stays on your bar all the time, gives you the bonus. You don't have to put it on both bars, but for the purpose of the build, we're going to. But this is very very nice now so i've seen people go oh my god it's 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 on but it's off again and they keep spamming it trying to get it to work it's got a new effect now so you don't have to press it mage's wrath this is very very important this is your main execute alongside any passives that we have it's the first ability you unlock in the storm calling tree and it's very very strong indeed now there is a morph of this which doesn't do the splash damage and all the shiny stuff but it does give you um, magic back if something dies but we don't need that because our sustain is huge so we'll take this one it's got splash damage thank you very much now how do you apply this if something is below 20 percent health you can fire this and it'll do additional damage it will execute it if you like 
as you can see here, that doesn't do much. But when his health goes down, let's put him to below 20%. Boom, massive. You get two hits instead of one. So you get the initial hit and then the splash or the, the execute power, if you like. So it's really nasty. There you go. It's huge. But don't spam this on targets that don't have low health. Now, here's the trick, however. You can apply this early. And if you look at this dude here, you can see it's got a countdown timer. Three, two, one, gone. Now, what that means is if you can get him to 20% or lower while it's on him, then it will pop. So put it on him first. Push him down a bit. Boom. There he goes. So you can either use it once to 20% or if you can anticipate that they're going to drop down quite quickly, you can put it on early. But don't just spam it when they're above 20% because that would be useless. So that's your main execute ability. Um, Meteor, this is actually not really for the damage unless you don't have enough ultimate for a death royalty and you're about to kill something. If you morph this into Ice Comet, it'll do a little bit more damage. If you morph it into um, Shooting Star, it will give you more ulti based on how many targets you hit. But again, this is not our main ultimate. This is mostly here just for the stats. So when I get to the passive, this is going to make a lot more sense. But just for being here, this will give us increased amount of Max Magicka. But don't panic, that's in the passives. Failing that, if you don't have access to that at the moment, you can put Suppression Field on, which is in the Dark Magic skill line. If we get to this over here so we can see exactly where it is. Doo -doo -dee. Oops, wrong button. There we go. Now what this does, this will put a big, big, big bubble on the ground. Anything caught inside of that will be stunned for 12 seconds. And they take damage every half a second for being inside of it. It is incredible for oh shit moments. So if you don't have Meteor or even if you just prefer, you can put this on your front bar. I only ever use it in extreme situations or when I'm in trouble. Or in certain situations in some trials where you need to pin stuff down. For example, gargoyles in uh, Hellra, they do a stone breath twice in a row and then they slam the ground. If your group doesn't have enough DPS to burn them down quickly or lots of people have a habit of standing in stupid, have one of these ready and you can pin it down when it gets after the second breath and it will never slam the ground. So it's a situational type skill, but you can put it on your front bar if you want for the time being if you don't have Meteor and you still will benefit overall from damage as you'll see in the passives when I get to it. Back bar. Bound Aegis again. We want it on both bars because more max magic means stronger light and heavy attacks and we are going to light attack on our back bar so we'll have that max magic. Contributes to these skills of course as well. It's very important, but your light attacks do benefit from this a lot now. So I have it on both bars. Not only that, on the new trial, um, Cloud Wrist, you might get a charged weapon um, mechanic. Now, if you're not too familiar with that, don't panic right now. But, of course, that is going to be relevant for later on once you do get there. If you're on your front bar and you've got some shields and you're blocking, that's very nice. But if you're on your back bar, you've got no shield. You've just had a charged weapon. You've got to swap. Oh, no, what do I do? Put this on first. You'll take less damage when you block. And you're a little bit safer than you would have been. So you can utilize it for that. But above all, of course, it's for the flash stats. Blockade of Storms. This is essential. This is your most important skill for this build. Now, second ability you unlock. This is what goes on the ground and you heavy attack inside of it. Do not heavy attack anything if this isn't underneath his feet. Now, Morph it to Elemental Blockade has really decent range and anything caught inside this will take lightning damage. And your heavy attacks will be increased if you have the Maelstrom weapon. That's very important. Now, it says Elemental Blockade here, but it's called Blockade of Storms because we're using the lightning stuff. As you can see, it does shock damage, and this is the concussed part that I was getting to earlier. If the target is concussed, if you were lucky enough to hit it with a status effect of lightning, then this wall will make it go off balance for five seconds. Now, if you're not familiar with off balance, off balance has a built-in, um, let's call it a feature or bonus to it, where if a target is off balance, the base game mechanics are that if you heavy attack it, you'll do 70% more damage to it. With the heavy attack, not the rest of your skills, just the heavy. Now, off balance also has a cooldown on bosses. So, for the 5 seconds that it is up, the damage can be done and you will get back double resources if you do a full heavy attack. So you get magic back from heavies, um, or stamina, if you're using stamina abilities, or stam weapons if you like. But, if you hit them while they're off balance, you get double back. So it's very, very important to your sustain. So make sure you're heavy attacking when that target's off balance. Now, the cooldown is 15 seconds. So over 20 seconds, you can only have 5 seconds up of off balance, meaning 25% uptime 
75% downtime. That 25% uptime comes around a lot, lot faster than you think, so keep your eyes peeled. If that does go off balance, you want to be heavy attacking it. That is very, very important to this particular setup. Now, on your own, it's not that easy to knock everything off balance all the time. If you're in a group, piece of piss, you'll do it all the time and you'll do a shit ton of damage. Also note, this is very important, there were certain enemies that were immune to off balance in the past. Stone Atros, um, Storm Atros, Lich type enemies, and Spider Daedra. Now of course, now there is a cooldown that has been since Dragon Bones, it doesn't really make sense for things to be completely immune because we've got a, a balanced cooldown now. So those targets can now be knocked off balance. So whereas before this particular setup was strong in pretty much all content but on those types of bosses it struggled a little bit now it's not going to so just bear that in mind now what you need to do is make sure that you fire this off and anything inside of this needs to take damage from your heavies so all you have to do is simply put this down heavy attack inside of it melted and it went off balance almost instantly that's essential by the way have to make sure things go off balance if you've got a couple of these guaranteed to happen Again, let's see if we can knock this dude down. Heavy attack inside of it, and he's, he's wrecked anyway. Shouldn't hit overland targets, I guess. Now, let's move on to the next lot of skills. Hopefully I'm not losing you. Um, Boundless Storms, this is very, very important, despite people thinking that it's not. This is in Storm Calling. This has multiple benefits. First of all, when you activate it, you increase your resistance, so you're quite tanky. 5280 is what you get from Major Ward and Major Resolve. So we activate this and check our stats. We are actually on 18k and 16k resists. We are quite tanky, especially if we block with a shield on with our block buff on. So there's your protection there. And we've got 17k health. It's really, really nice. Now, what else this does? is while it's active it does almost 1k damage a second for 23 seconds to anything nearby and it actually does a bit more than that especially when you buff up and also it can crit as well so it's very very strong so damage to close by enemies plus a resist bonus plus you get speed bonus for seven and a half seconds as well so if you want to get around quickly or you're in a mechanic where you have to move fast or whatever this is very very good if it's already active you just reapply it and you get a speed buff for seven seconds but the buff itself lasts 23 it's really really nice also, this is relevant to our next skill. This is very, very, very important for our next one. Our next skill is Power Surge. It's in the same skill line. It's a fourth ability you unlock. Morph it to Power Surge. And this will give you major sorcery and major brutality. Now, brutality we're not using because we don't have any physical damage. That affects physical. Major sorcery increases our spell damage by 20% for 33 seconds. At the same time, while this ability is active, any crit damage you do will heal you for 2.5k, and this can happen once a second. Now remember that this fires once a second. Yes, that means that while this is active, the Power Surge, there's a Power Surge right there, Boundless Storms can heal you once a second if it crits. So, we'll come and stand near this guy here, and try and die. Every time you crit, you'll heal. So he's just hit me, and I'm healing. Not even have to do anything. Healing all the time. That is a lifesaver. I can't tell you how many times I have used that and it has saved my life while trying to res someone. So if you're trying to pick someone up, Crips, Crip Surge, sorry, Power Surge, this one's called, Power Surge, Boundless Storms, pick them up. Anything that comes close to you will be zapped and you will heal through the damage that you're taking. It's really, really helpful. Now, this must stay up all the time. I know some people out there like to go Squish Sork. I've got some variation for that for you later on, but... If you're new to it, or you're just comfortable with it, or that you want to play this particular playstyle, this is essential. It's very hard to die while this is active, and you don't have to rely too much on healers unless you take some really big hits. As long as you're doing damage, you will heal, and that's all damage. Not just this, this is very, very important, but all skills that we use, as long as it's a skill and not a proc from a set, can crit, which means we can heal from it. It's very, very strong. Now, Liquid Lightning, this is also in Stormcalling. This is a little bit earlier on, actually. Now this is a AoE effect on the ground, so you just place it wherever you want it. Anything caught in this will take damage every second. I think it's every second. It's every two seconds. No, it's every second. For 10 seconds. Now there is another morph for this, which is a lower duration and higher damage, but it's very hard to fit into the rotation, so I chose this one overall. However, if you want to use the other one, you're more than welcome to. You end up with exactly the same damage overall, but you just have a two second downtime. I prefer not to have the two second downtime because of a certain passive that we are going to get to where you can have increased 
uh, chance for critting execute with this one and reduce chance on the other. So the flat damage is the same overall if you're doing the same rotation, but you can actually lose out on execute, but I will get to that in a moment. Thunderous Rage. This is very, very important. This is in the destruction stuff. Skill line, Elemental Rage when I morph it to, and then change, obviously, when you put it on your bar to Thunderous Rage. You don't have to change it. It changes it itself because we're using a Shock Staff. If you're using a Flame Staff, it will say something different and so on. Now, this basically... Have I got enough ultimate? Yes, I have. There you go. Big, big storm. Everything in there is pretty much stuffed. Very, very powerful indeed. It does lightning damage, of course, which we are focused on. It does damage to every enemy inside of that, and it lasts for 9 seconds, not 7. You'll notice that it says it lasts an extra 2 seconds longer because we're using a lightning stuff. If it was flame, it would be 7 seconds. If it's lightning, it's 9. And because it's lightning damage, I hope you're still with me, this here, this here, this here, and this here, they're all lightning, and the one on the front, they can all apply concussion if you're lucky. And if you are, while using Wall of Elements, bl Elemental Blockade or Blockade of Storms, they can go off balance. So this is essential. Concussion, Lightning, off balance, bigger heavy attacks. Heavy attacks are main source of damage, and we use it to get our resources back as well. Very, very nice indeed. And not to mention, of course, when I get to the passive, you're going to see why this is even more stronger than it looks already. Um, have we done all the skills? Yes, we have. Good. Passive time. Let's go. Dark Magic. I'm not using any of them. Nothing at all. So I'm not even going to go over them. Except for Suppression Field. This is your oh shit button if you want to use it. And if you don't have Ice Comet or Meteor. Whichever version of the two you may have. Now, the passives here are quite important, however. Reduces the maximum magic and stamina cost of your abilities. So your abilities are cheaper. So it's a no-brainer that you would get that. We don't need this one because this will heal you for 5% of your max health um, if you use a dark magic ability. Technically that should work with this, but we don't use it enough to get that tiny tiny heal so I didn't bother wasting the skill points, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to. Uh, this one, after blocking an attack, your next magical or stamina ability costs 15% less. So if you're blocking something, you just wasted a shit ton of magic on this skill, but you blocked it anyway, your next hit or your next ability or a shield or whatever is cheaper. So that's very, very important. While blocking, you can actually be a little bit more tanky than you were before, Somerset, by um, applying ch shields cheaper than before. So very, very nice indeed, and also quite nice for Sork tanks as well. Now we've got a couple more. This one here, when you cast a Dark Magic ability, you grant Minor Prophecy to you and your group increasing your spell crit by 657 for 20 seconds. Now that's about 3% or so. Um, it's not massive. It does contribute, of course, to you and the group, but you're not using Dark Magic abilities, so it only really applies when you fire this off. However, if you want it, go for it. Daedric Summoning, we're only using two abilities, but these two passives here are very important. This one is for pets, so don't use it. This one's for pets, so I don't use that either. Reduces your ultimate cost by 15%. We want to use that more often. Of course, we want to make sure that that's cheaper. Get that. Increases your health and stamina recovery by 20% while a Daedric Summoning ability is slotted. Now, I know being a vampire, we don't really care about the health recovery, but we do care about the stamina recovery because we are going to be blocking, we are going to be dodge rolling, and we are going to be sprinting around a little bit sometimes. We do want to make sure that we get that stamina back quicker so we can block more often or dodge roll when we need to. There's nothing worse than having nearly no recovery whatsoever on stamina and just running out of juice and not being able to block. You are going to need to do that. Storm calling. This is important as hell. Mag recovery. You want a recovery uh, bonus because you want to make sure you can still apply your abilities. Um, increases your physical and shock damage by 5%. We are doing nothing but shock damage. We want to make sure that this is boosted. So there's the 5% bonus there. Also, this is essential. And this is why it's so important to get as much shock damage as possible. Ignore the physical part because we're not doing any physical damage, but if you read the top part for implosion, when you deal shock damage, you have a 6% chance to instantly disintegrate enemies under 15% health, dealing 11,429 shock damage. That is actually a lot more than that. It's really, really powerful, especially when you crit it on low health targets, because this is free as well. The more light and damage you have going, the more likely that is to happen. So if you have Destructive Clench, which I can't fire because there's no target, you have Liquid Lightning, that's two. You have Boundless Storms, that's three. Wall of Elements, that's four. Destro Royalty, that's five. Several abilities at once that every single second that they're running can do an Execute uh, proc, which is very, very strong indeed. Not only do you have this Execute here, which can also proc it, by the way, um, but you have a passive one that can constantly run if a target's low health. So at Execute, you do a shit ton of damage, especially if you keep your rotation up. One more thing to note, it can also proc from this. 
So let's see if we can get it to fire off a light attack. You can, but it's tricky. I'm trying to get him low health. Too late, we killed him. Destruction staff. First of all, if you heavy attack a target, you will create splash damage to nearby enemies. The closer they are, the more damage you'll do. And the higher your heavy attack damage, the more splash damage you will do. Now, I'm going to go over this when I get into the rotation and everything, but as far as I've seen so far, this has sometimes as much area of attack damage to each target as some people have single target. It is very, very strong if you utilize it correctly. Um, your Destro Staff abilities ignore 10% of the enemy's spell resistance, which is nice. It means you hit them harder. The cap for spell resistance or physical resistance is 18,200 on main bosses and targets and mobs and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you get that down by applying extra penetration to your own setup or by debuffing the target, bringing them together so they actually match up to be that number. If you overcap a little bit, don't panic. But if you overcap a lot, then you're doing something wrong and you need to bring back some of your penetrating values but we'll worry about that in a bit i'm gonna go into that when we get to traits and cps and all that good stuff also i know some people like to hit penetration cap flat out and nothing else based on maybe debuffs and stuff that are applied to the main target just consider the fact that all the ads around are not necessarily going to have the same debuffs on nor are you going to have 100 percent uptime on all the debuffs as well so it helps to have a little bit more sometimes so that you can do extra splash damage to those that aren't debuffed that's very relevant i'm going to get to that when i show you the demonstration and also it helps to kind of close the gap just in case timers are off anyway this here increases your chance to apply burning concussion chilled and status effects to the target by 100 percent that's not 100 percent chance to do it there's a hundred percent increase on what the chance is so we have more chance to create concussion which will give us more chance to create off balance gain uh, bonuses effects for your staff type. This one is very important, by the way. Any ability slotted, any Destro staff ability slotted will let you have these passives. If you don't have a Destro st skill slotted, you won't have the passive. So we have Destructive Clench on this bar, and we have Wall of Elements on the other bar, or Destro Ulti, both count. Um, if you don't have one on the bar, you will not benefit from this. Now, every staff is different, but the Lightning staff increases your damage done by area of effect abilities. So everything that we do is actually area of effect. That is, that is, Bound of Storms is, and so is the splash damage from our heavy attack. So they all kind of work hand in hand. Make sure you pay attention to that. Death Royalty as well, that's area of effect. Very, very important. And of course, this last one is really, really good. We are using heavy attacks like hell. Do you spam execute to kill something or do you finish a heavy attack that is the choice you're gonna to have to make sometimes because if you use execute you're gonna waste about three to four k magicka but if you finish it with a heavy attack you get the magicka back from the full heavy and you get 3600 magicka back because you killed it with a destro staff ability heavy attack counts as a destro ability also if you have a wall of elements already down and you're heavy inside of it it's bound to die from either one of the two so it still counts it's very very nice indeed make sure you get them all Light armor, get every single one of these. They benefit your spell penetration, which is really, really nice. You go through their resists, um, increases your crit chance, uh, increases your resists, which is quite nice, and also increases your recovery and your reduction to cost. So cheaper skills, faster recovery, higher damage. Medium, make sure you get the ones that are relevant to you. So this one increases weapon crit. You aren't going to need it. We use magic weapons, not physical weapons. So you don't need this. This is for another setup. Um, increases your stamina recovery per piece. We're using one piece of medium. This is going to help. Go for it if you've got the points. Reduces the cost of sneak and also sneak detection. That's not relevant for PvE. However, if you want it for other stuff, go for it. And this one as well. Um, reduces the cost of dodge rolling for each piece worn. So you are wearing one piece again, so you are going to want this. We will be dodge rolling. This is 100% irrelevant. It's only useful if you have five pieces of medium armor. Otherwise, you won't benefit it. So don't buy this. Heavy, we are using one piece. So make sure that you get the physical resist bonus. Make sure you get constitution, because for the one piece that we do have, we get minor bonuses back, I guess. We get tiny, tiny amount of resources, but it does count. Every little bit counts. And juggernaut, of course, to give us a 2% increase for max health just for wearing one heavy piece. The more heavy you wear, the more bonus you get from this, but we want to use one. These are useless to us because we're not wearing five pieces of heavy. These are for another build, so don't buy these two. Um, vampire is very important. Ignore these skills as for another build. This is the most important one, I guess. Well, actually, two of them. But this will increase your stamina and magicka recovery. So, passively, you just have that recovery just for being stage 2 or higher. And for being stage 3 or higher, when your health is low, you take up to 33% less damage. So, you take less damage for being low health while under 50% and lower. 
Now, I know people are worried about fire because, yes, you do take 25% increased damage from fire. However, remember, we have high resists, we have shields, we have this block stuff which we can do, and there are ways to avoid fire. First of all, if it's on the ground aiming straight at you in a line, move out of the way. If it's in a big circle like this, don't stand in it. And if it's aimed at you like a fireball like this, a straight shot, block it or dodge roll it. It's very, very simple. There are other mechanics in the game that allow you to put on shields and all that kind of stuff, but they're the basic ones. That's how you avoid them. I see people going, oh my god, it's fire. Oh my god, I'm going to die. And they run around doing stupid stuff and just end up running into it and say, oh, that's because I was a vampire. It's not because you're a vampire. It's because you fucking stood in it. Be careful. Now, uh, next, next, next. What do we got? Fighter's Guild, you can get these. This is very important, actually. Every undead werewolf or danger that you kill will grant you nine ultimate me, and you can go and spam that death royalty a little bit sooner. So make sure you get this. The rest aren't that relevant, so ignore them for now. Unless, of course, you want intimidating presence for NPCs for if you're doing quests. But this is important for your overall damage and sustain of your ulties. Mage's Guild, this is very, very important. Make sure that you get... Where are we? Not the duration, we're not too worried about it. You can get them all, I mean, especially if you're using Ice Comet, but I generally don't. But the one you want is this here. Increases your Max Magicka and Magicka Recovery by 2% for each ability slotted. Now, if you have this on, I know it gives you 5% already, but it gives you another 2% for being there, plus the recovery. This here, this is just for stats. 2% Health, and sorry, 2% Magicka and 2% Recovery for being there. Very, very nice indeed. Now, this one here, when you cast the Mage's Guild ability, your next light attack within 5 seconds will be 40% stronger. They changed in power. In power now gives you increased light attack damage. We're only using the light attacks on our back bar, so if you can sneak it in after a noise comet, then maybe you'll get away with it, but this isn't too important for us. However, if you want to utilize that in your own builds, you're more than welcome to, and that means using stuff like this as well will also buff your next ability. So if you look at my buffs at the bottom there, you can see the, the pink background with the white um, kind of flash with the sword in it. That is in power, and if you use a light attack, it's going to hit harder. But, you see 11k, I didn't even buff up. It's huge. But, um, that's not important for us. So, that's for other builds. Undaunted, make sure you get these as soon as possible. Get your dungeons done, get some achievements done, and level this up as soon as possible. Because this is essential. If you take a synergy, and you should be... They do damage, they heal you, they give you shields, they protect your group, they do all sorts of positive things. No synergy is negative. Take the synergies, and if you do, you'll get max magic back, you'll get health back, and you will get stamina back. So you heal and get resources for doing so, plus the bonus in the first place. And, last but not least, of course, for Undaunted, you need this. For each type of armor you're wearing, you get 2% to everything. So 2% magic, 2% stamina, 2% max health. We are using three different types of armor. We're using five light pieces, one heavy piece, one medium piece. So with the three different variations of armor, we get a full 6% bonus across the board, which is why our resources are so high. That's essential to your health, by the way. 6% extra health there, and plus the 2% for the health from the heavy piece, just for the health bonus, the third one down in the heavy armor skill line. That's very, very important. I see a lot of people using this kind of setup and they're like, well, I've got 14k health. Why is that? You've got 14k health because you didn't get these passives. Make sure you get them. Also, don't forget to put food on. These are not important, but your raid leader may ask you at some point to buy this for Sanctum Ophidia. I'll leave that for another day, but essentially that's to get rid of a magicka bomb. I'm sure they'll explain that for you. If not, I might have to make a video on it. Um, this here, of course, we are a high elf. It's very, very important that we're a high elf. This is irrelevant. That's just for leveling up. Um, although you get more experience, so it helps with your CPs, I guess. This increases your max magicka recovery by 9%. So that's very, very nice. We have high recovery. We get magicka back from heavy attacks all the time anyway. This contributes. 10% max magicka, really, really nice. The more magicka we have, the more damage we do with our skills and our lights and heavy attacks. Increases your flame, frost, and shock damage by 4%. We're using nothing but shock, and that is increased by 5% already with our sort passives. This increases it by further 4% really really nice make sure you get all these passives as soon as possible they're all unlocked at level 50 so once you're there you're good to go this one is in my opinion one of the most important passives in the entire game if you want to sustain properly or if you want to make use of your buffs if you craft potions they will have a very long duration on them but it won't be a hundred percent uptime unless you buy this passive if you buy this passive, your potions last 30% longer. So max this out. I've got a video in the description, actually, that will tell you how to get alchemy up in 15 minutes flat to maximum. Once you've got it maxed, 
dump all the skill points again and just put three into here and you're good to go. Now, if I show you a potion that I use occasionally, I say occasionally loosely because I use it a lot on other characters, just not so much on this one. Um, here we are, this one here. This one will give you major sorcery and major prophecy and major intellect. So you have recovery, you have crit and you have spell damage for 47.6 seconds instead of like 36. The cooldown is 45 seconds, so you can have this up 100% of the time, it'll never, ever, ever fall off. Now I know we have Sorcery and Prophecy already, because we're using Power Surge. However, if you choose to, you can use these, and I'll show you something else you can do with it. But, above all, at least have something so you can pop some recovery occasionally. Trash Pots are fine, you might not even need them at all, because you can just use Stamina so you can block more. Trash Pots work just fine, but if you are... Um, that 1% if you like and you want to go that little bit further and you've got a few materials pop some of these You can't go wrong with them And give you crit on both bars as well, which is of course really really handy now One more thing to note change outs things that we can alter if you are in a situation where you need to interrupt a lot Drop this skill and replace it with destructive. Sorry crushing shock. This is I'll show you exactly what it does very simple hit him with it it hits with three different elements at once, so it always does three attacks. Fire, ice, and lightning all at once. Now, it's not so much of a DPS skill for us, although we weave that in instead of destructive clench. But this is for the interrupt. 28 meters range, it will stop things casting. It's very, very important, especially for trials. So in situations where it's relevant, switch this skill out for this. The rest of the time, use destructive clench. It can stun stuff anyway, so you're fine, unless it's really big. Um, this one we already went over, you can change it to suppression field depending on the situation. And also, the rotation requires us to use this skill in the rotation. However, if you're brave, or if you like using sorcerers without power surge, and you want to push that little bit, tiny more DPS, what you can do is you can put crush and shock on the back bar. You can weave it into your rotation instead of that buff, so once every second rotation, which I'm going to explain, and you'll get a little bit more damage out. Or you can use um, the infused weapon. I can't remember what the um, the morph of it was. It might be infused. Was it imbue weapon? I can't remember. It's a skill from a Sigic Order skill line anyway. Been doing a lot of testing with that, um, especially on PTS and on PC as well. And this also can go there. It will do about the same amount of damage. So it's up to you whether you want to use it or not. Um, failing that, if you want to keep things simple and just stay where you are, which is fine. You don't need to really panic and change anything. Just go with this. So... If you want really good damage and want sustain and survivability and all that good stuff, go with this on the back bar. If you want to push to make your healers work really, really hard and be quite squishy, then of course you can switch to this and I'll show you exactly how to use it in a moment. Now, gear, and then we'll go over rotation and CPs, which are very, very important. Oh, I did mean to mention about the poisons. Nope, we'll do that in the gear. Gear is here. Don't laugh. This is a little different. Jewelry crafting, of course, has been introduced into the game, meaning you can make some sets do stuff that they couldn't do before. I'm using a medium set, but I'm using it on my jewelry and my weapon, so it doesn't actually have a weight, meaning I can get away with using it on my setup, and it doesn't actually affect me negatively at all. Now, before, of course, medium sets um, had robust jewelry, which is no good to me, because I'm not using stamina as my main resource for damage. However... This is where it comes into play. Jewelry crafting, of course, allowed me to change the traits so that now it does benefit me. Also, the weapon itself. Two-handed weapons, resto staffs, um, staves rather, destruction staves, and two-handed weapons and bows all count as two pieces now. So if you look here, Undaunted Infiltrator actually counts as two pieces. Now, this is sharpened on purpose. Yes, that is sharpened on purpose because I want to make sure I breach as much of the enemy's resist as possible, whether I'm solo or in a group. If I'm in a trial situation, I'm definitely going to hit cap, but the buffs won't be up 100% of the time. So if there are gaps in debuffs, then I'll fill it. Also, because I'm doing lots and lots of splash damage, all the surrounding enemies aren't going to be debuffed, so I've got that extra penetration that other people won't necessarily have. It works really, really well. I've tried countless different combinations of things, and this one has performed overall much much better than any other combination so far now the increased weapon and spell damage of course is to make sure that my spell damage is increased for better damage from my lights my heavies and my skills so this will be up when i'm on my front bar what this also does is this is very important it gives you max magicka more max magic more damage max magic again weapon crit ignore that one that's a bit of a boo slot and the fifth one is essential if you use a magicka ability your light and heavy attacks will be increased. So 1.1k for the heavies and 707 
747 for the lights. It doesn't sound like that much, but this stacks with everything we're using. Don't panic, I'm gonna get there. This is gonna make a lot more sense. If you gold out all the jewelry and the weapon as well, which I haven't done, I've gold the weapon, but not the jewelry, this actually goes higher. So there's more damage to come, but we're gonna get to it. Don't panic, this does look a little less than it is. Now, the Maelstrom weapon, Yes, this setup and the previous setup can do Maelstrom absolutely fine if you don't have the weapon, so you can farm it if you've had practice. But if you can get it, this is going to boost your DPS a shit ton. I am using poisons, I'll get to that in a second. But what this does is if you place Wall of Elements down, this one here, anything inside of that will take additional damage from your light and heavy attacks. And that can obviously stack and crit and all the rest of it. Now, that stacks with that together they stack up so that increases your lights and heavies by a shit ton and of course remember if the target is off balance there's another stack and bonus which means everything you're now doing increase including the the maelstrom bonus the undaunted infiltrator bonus and your heavy will now be increased by 70 percent so it's fucking huge so if we put this here go on go off balance a day oh you suck get another one can't make him go off balance. Whatever. So, what we've got is five-piece undaunted infiltrator. So, we have one weapon at the front. It's very important that's at the front. And we have the three jewelry. Now, the jewelry are trait changed. So, instead of robust, they're infused, giving us more spell damage. Two of them. And bloodthirsty. Now, if you've got two and you don't have the infused trait to research, you want to go arcane, the damage is actually pretty much the same. It's not much in it at all. But just consider that this is purple. So, I get a 51% increase to my enchant. However, if this was gold, it would be a 60% increase. So this will go up to 278 instead of 262. So there is still, again, more damage to come. More damage from here, more damage from this fifth piece if we gold all these out, and more damage from each individual jewelry piece. This will be stronger, this can be stronger, and this can be stronger as well. So instead of it being a 9% increase to enemies that are under 25% health, it's a 10% increase. So there is room for improvement, but this one is very, very strong. If you go too many Bloodthirsty, you're going to lose out on your passive DPS. But if you have a little bit of Bloodthirsty, when you get to that execute um, rotation or that execute area, you can start doing a shit ton. It really, really peaks. It's really nice. Now, the other set, of course, head and shoulders. You've probably seen it already. Grofdar, two pieces. One heavy, one medium. Doesn't matter which order they're in. Of course, this should be Divines. I haven't got a Divine, so tough shit. Um, but you should have one of these on each. Both Helmet and shoulders, although this counts as a small piece for the enchant and this counts as a large, both give exactly the same resistance, no matter what they are. So if it's heavy here or heavy here, they're both the same. If it's a medium here or a medium here, they're both the same. So in any order, what I would recommend is getting any shoulder, medium or heavy, if you can help it, and then farming the helmet because the helmet's a lot, lot easier to get. The shoulder is full out RNG. The helmet is just a matter of time before one of your group members get the one you want. So infused on the large pieces, by the way, so the head the chest and the legs, divines on all the small pieces. The third set is Infallible Ether. I can see people panicking because this is a trial set, but this is actually quite simple to pick up. The reason being is I'm not using the Ether staff. This comes from Arx Carinium. This is a dungeon. You can do it on normal and pick it up quite easily, but you just have to be patient with the drop rate. Now, instead of telling you to go to a trial and try and farm a really, really, really rare specific weapon, you don't need to. You just put five pieces on the body and you've got the whole set done. Now, when you go into any of the Craglon trials, on normal, all of them can drop these pieces. So Divines are the small, infused on the big, which I haven't done, and just upgrade it as you go. So you get it in blue, make it purple, make it gold, do what you want with it. But pick it up on a normal trial, just go on a random pickup, and you do not need to be any CP level to do normal trials. You can be any level you like. Just get a couple tanks, a couple healers, and a load of DPS, and you'll be fine. There's no need to have max level or any of this crap that people keep trying to throw at you. You can just go in as a normal pickup group and get your loot and get out. If it was jewelry and a weapon, I can understand that that would be frustrating, but it's not. So you are in safe hands. However, just for those out there that are wondering, yes, you can use Julianus if you want to craft that for the time being. You will lose about 3 or 4k DPS, maybe a little bit more from my testing so far, but it will work. Elegant. 
yes, you can use that as well. It's not going to be as high as this, but it will still also work in the meantime while you're waiting for Infallible Aether. Or whatever you want to go for. And also, Sororia does also work, but it's tricky because you have to stand still quite a lot to make sure you keep the prop going. So that's also your choice. But out of all the tests so far, I've actually topped out with this particular set. And this is also uh, have a, having a stack and bonus with our setup. Now, this will give you crit chance which we do need we want to make sure we crit those heavy attacks it gives you minus slayer increasing your damage done inside a dungeon or trial by five percent which we definitely want increases spell damage so lights heavies and skills are increased of course crit again give us another crit chance which is awesome and then your fully charged heavy attacks deal additional 903 damage that is on top of what your last tick is so we have a burst um effect when the attack finishes that's very very important so this affects our heavy attacks in Wall of Elements. This affects our heavy attacks if we've used a magic ability in the last 10 seconds on the front bar, and this has a nasty pop on the end of it. It looks really low, but I'm going to show you again just to demonstrate that it's not. And also, a fully charged heavy attack will also put a pink kind of aura on the enemy, meaning that they have minor vulnerability, increasing the damage you do to them by 8%, and everybody else as well. So it's a buff, it's a bonus, and it's basically like 100% uptime on concussion. It's not the same as concussion, but it's the same damage bonus. So these are very, very nice put together. They work really, really well. Incidentally, if you don't have Grofdar or you are deliberately ranged, if you're not in the face of the enemy, you can go Valken Scoria. You won't have as much Magicka. You'll have 1k less. You will have more health and it will still do roughly the same damage. It's a little bit less, but not by much. So it's up to you. Ranged Valken Scoria, close Grofdar. I personally recommend Grofdar because it is nuts. Watch this. Run in. Pop. You're constantly doing damage to things that are close to you. So I like to be in their face. I've got high resists anyway, so I like to get a little bit close with a mag. Uh, with a mag sort of, especially set up this way anyway. Now, the heavy attack I was on about. This is going to be quite low because I'm not going to put Wall of Elements on, but I'm going to do a full heavy look for the pop at the end above his head. See that 8k there? That's what you're looking for. That's not 903. That's 903 on top of it, plus can crit. And if we put this on first, now watch. Ah, he didn't, didn't fire. Didn't get a chance. Killed him too soon. Where's another Basilisk type thing? Salamander, Stroke, Gecko. This dude here. Ready. Heavy. I can't, I can't kill him. Not with the finish. He's dying too quick. Can't show you. <laughs> My god. Where's something bigger? Where's a griffin or something? I saw one up here earlier. There he is. He'll do. My magic ran out. My food even. So we'll do this. We'll try this guy instead. Come on. Look above his head for the big pop. Come on. What help of it a crit. There's another one. Come over here. Oh my god, what a terrible demonstration. Everything's so squishy. Forget it. We can't do it. There's no more things to kill. We ruined it. Oh, we got away with it. There you go. There's a 12.9. Finally. You get the idea. It's stronger by quite a large percentage. And um, if you're buffed as well, obviously that can do a lot more damage. And if it's a full off-balance tick, it does even more. We're taking this, by the way video or not cornflower is bloody expensive right so without waffling too much which i'm doing a little bit everything benefits our heavy attacks everything benefits our skills because you know a lot of magic and spell damage everything kind of works together what you have to do is make sure you keep up your dots keep that down keep that down and make sure for god's sake you're heavy and inside of it now, I'm going to show you a rotation on the skeleton in a moment, and then I'm going to show you a demonstration of the kind of uh, the squishier version to let you know where, how far it can go solo. The setup exactly the same as this um, can hit really, really high damage, in fact. We're pushing sort of 37, 38k solo. Average around 36 if you have unlucky off-balance ticks, but still very, very high nonetheless, especially considering a lot of damage is also applied to um, error of effect. Your error of effect is insane. Now, if you go the squish version, you can hit 38 more average um, instead of 36, 37 more average, but that can also go a lot, lot higher. Just with um, hit and pen cap on a solo test, you can go 40, 42. But we're not hitting pen cap, of course, because look at what we're using. We are using 
Thief. We only hit Penguin Cap when we're in a group, not when we're on the skeleton. So we're not cheesing it on none of that shit. Now, um, let's give you a quick rundown on... Oh, potions. Poisons, rather. These here. Nightshade. Wormwood. No, it's not. Nightshade, Nern Root, and Flesh Fly Lava. Get as much of it as you can with Alkahist and make a shit ton of them. Stick them on your back bar. While you're applying damage, these will fire off and they will do a lot of damage. They're very, very nice indeed. I know that you can go with glyphs and stuff on the back if you want, but this is really, really important. It's actually really, really strong. However, we forgot about the trait. Charged on purpose because we boost our chance to hit concussion, which means we get off balance more often. If that wasn't too confusing. Now, champion points. These are not set in stone, but you can change them if you want. 44 into here to reduce our break free cost if we get stunned. 75 points into tenacity and 75 points into arcanus. This will increase our recovery and the amount that we restore when we heavy attack. If you put 75 points into these two, you're absolutely fine. If you try and reach the 1% on top of that, you're going to cost you 25 points, which is a waste because then we couldn't use stuff like this. If we use 25 points in here for 1% and another 25 points in here, that's 50 points wasted, which means we only have 6 to put in here. It's going to be terrible. So balance them out correctly. Don't go too far into diminished returns. 75 is just fine. 56 into tumbling. I've got a lot in there because I do dodge roll quite a bit, especially in Maelstrom. So it's really, really nice to have that reduction to cost. We're going to resist now. Um, 11 points into quick recovery. This is for the heal and receive. So when you heal yourself, or when you get heals from power surge or anything like that, or you get healed by somebody else, this will actually increase its strength. Now we have 11 points in here on purpose. We want the 10 points for field physician. While you're resurrecting someone, you take 15% less damage and you will be doing that. Remember the tip I told you about boundless storms, power surge and resing. You heal while you're getting hit. You take less damage while you're resin. They all work hand in hand. Everything is like a jigsaw puzzle and all the pieces are starting to come together. However, we have 11 points on purpose because we want to make sure we hit that 3%. If you take one point out, yeah, we'll still get this, but we won't get the 3% bonus. We'll actually be under it. Decimals do not count towards your flat bonuses. You won't get nothing from it. So the next bonus, as you can see, is 3.44. That will give us nothing. We won't get anything until we hit 4% and so on. 75 points into Hardy, 75 points into Elemental Defender, and 51 into Fixed Skin, giving us 14% reduction to those damage types and 19% reduction to dots. Now, this is a very, very nice across the board. It's really, really handy. I've never really failed with it at all. Um, but if you want to mess with other stuff based on the situation you're in, that's fine because some trials will require you change to other stuff like Ironclad or more Elemental and less Hardy or more Spell Shield or whatever. You got these on this side. I'm going to get into those. But this is actually a really nice balance. Um, so situations can change what these actually are. It's, it depends on what you're up against. But they're really nice for all round use. And 15% reduction to direct damage or direct attacks that you take. Now I'm not hitting any major points as far as diminished returns is concerned. So that's fine. And I can't use one more point in anything. So I just put it in spell shield for now because that's where it's in. But this here, 37 points into here will reduce the amount of direct damage you take. Most of the time, direct damage is going to the tank, but it depends on the situation. Dungeons and stuff, you're generally okay. Some trials, you get like meteors and big burst damage and stuff like that. You might want to put some more points into here, but it depends on what you're up against. 81 points into Thermoturge. Usually, I'd go 75, but we'll go the extra 1% to push it over the edge a little bit. The reason we put 75 points in here in the first place is none other than, of course, we do want dot damage, but we want this passive here. This gives you outright 10% increased damage across the board for everything you do, including the increased damage from your heavy attacks, which is already up by 70% when something is off balance. You only need 75 points in this tree. This is the only one you can use for Magicka because the rest is all physical stuff. But if you go 81, you get to 24% rather than 23 and a bit. Uh, 33 into Staff Expert, increasing our light and heavy attacks by 19%, which is already boosted like hell by our sets. 5 points into Master at Arms, giving us a 2% increase to any light attacks or direct damage that we may do. Uh, 48 into Elfborn, giving us that extra crit damage if, if we crit. 70 points into here, making sure that our shock damage is a flat 14% no matter what it is. Whether it's a skill, a light attack, a heavy attack, doesn't matter, it benefits them all. And 8 points into Spell Erosion. Now, we are using Sharpened, which means we don't need to put too many points into here. We're not using Nern Hone or Precise or anything like that, where it's just flat and we don't have the extra penetration. If we did have any of those, 
you'd have to put a lot more points into here but we don't need to so we only really need seven or eight points in here to actually hit cap in fact you can hit with one point you can hit cap if you are fully buffed with all the mega shinies but if you don't have them all this is just fine for dungeons or trials this is not a problem at all um and also, if you are in a trial where it's fully, fully optimized and you've got all the shiny debuffs and all the rest of it, there will be gaps. So it helps to push it over the edge just with those little extra points. Also, like I said already, we're doing a lot of area of effect damage. We want to make sure that we've got penetration uh, increase on all the targets, not just one or two that the main tank is focusing on. So this is really, really good balance across the board. Good heavy attack damage. Good penetration because we're using a sharpened weapon, of course. Decent crit damage, high magical damage as far as our magic and lightning and all that kind of stuff is concerned, and high dot damage as well. I've tried countless different variations of these to try and optimize it as much as possible. Just remember, just because we're using heavy attacks twice in our rotation doesn't mean we are just a heavy attack build. We are utilizing all of our skills and our heavy attacks happens to be one of them. So don't just go 100 points in here and bugger all anywhere else because this means your skills will be less heavies will be more skills will be less we want everything to be balanced now i'm going to go to banish cells just because it's one of my favorite dungeons um we'll go on vet of course because we want to make sure that we have a good demonstration of it and we shall be just running in killing trash that kind of stuff just so you can see how the damage is applied and how mental the aoe is Okie dokie. So, what you need to do, of course, if you're in trouble, put a shield on. If it's a big heavy attack coming in, the tank's dropped it and you're in shit, keep your shield up. Activate bound Aegis and you can block and take less damage. But what you need to do above all, first of all, keep power surge on at all times. Keep boundless storms on at all times. They are very, very important. Now, a standard rotation for this is basically liquid lightning. Keep that down. It lasts 10 seconds. Light attack. One of your buffs, so boundless storms. Light attack again, then wall of elements, and then weapon swap. Now, the reason they do it in that order is because this lasts 10 seconds, and this lasts 8. You've got 2 seconds in there between the two to make sure that when they both run out, they'll both run out at the same time, which gives us time to put on our buff. So, liquid lightning, light attack, buff, light attack, wall of elements, swap bars. Very, very simple. Now, the second time you come to that back bar, you'll do exactly the same. But instead of boundless storms after this light attack, you get power surge. Then light attack will swap. Do it once more. Lightning, light attack, buff, light attack, wall, swap. Every single rotation. One rotation is the boundless, the next rotation is the power surge. Now, the front bar is very, very simple. Hold heavy attack, hit destructive clench. Hold heavy attack, hit destructive clench, swap bars, start again. That's all you have to do shield when you need to keep your buffs up one more thing to pay very close attention to as you can see my arms are glowing orange that's for a very very important reason we are using an undaunted infiltrator and of course if we use a magic ability for 10 seconds our light and heavies are stronger so make sure this is active before you do this and that by the way although they're quite small is on vet they hit bloody hard The AoE is insane. There's just clench, heavy, clench, swap. Now, if you're in a situation where you don't have time to do full rotations, you're just killing trash, of course, you can just put down one or two dots and you're good. So just put wall down and heavy attack inside of it. But it's key that you must use a magic ability and you must have this wall of elements down. Keep the enemy inside of it and heavy attack while it's down. Very, very important. Don't run around the room trying to heavy. If you're heavy attacking with no wall of elements, you're doing it wrong. My arms aren't glowing. Make sure they are. Buffs on. Pull these together, actually. As you can see, my Grothdar is firing off, which is fine because I want it to. So I want to stay in their face to get the most damage out of it. Range guy at the back. Bring him in. Keep the wall down. Off balance, heavy attacks. My god. Now, when something's low health, you can either finish a heavy or you can execute it with that. And it'll pop. Keep your dots down. Heavy attack inside of it. Keep your shield up if you need to. You'll notice I'm healing like hell. Even though I'm taking damage, I'm healing a lot. Because you keep your buffs on. 
Don't heavy attack on your back bar, though. You can if you really get stuck, so don't worry if you do get stuck. But the idea is to heavy attack on the front bar because that's where your sharpened weapon is. Your, l your wall of elements is on the back bar, so if you're lucky and you hit concussion with your charged weapon, by the time you swap, they'll go off balance. And that's what you're looking for. Off balance instantly. See what I mean? It doesn't happen 100% of the time, but it happens a lot. And if you've got two people using this, or perhaps this and the off balance Templar, which is on my channel, they bounce off each other and it works really, really well. Remember, you've got to make sure they're in the wall. Keep your shield up if you get in trouble. Oops. And you're good to go. Most of it, I'm hitting one target and everything else is dying around it. So you can see if there's loads of individual enemies, obviously, the guy at the back doesn't get hit. But if you hug them up, they get destroyed. Now, remember I said there was a different way to set it up? The rotation on the back bar. Liquid lightning, light attack, one of your two buffs, light attack, wall of elements. That still applies, but if you dump this, you decide to get rid of it, you can use Crush and Shock instead, or the infused weapon from the Sigic Order skill line. You can use either one of the two, in fact Crush and Shock does a little bit more, and you can replace it with this. So every rotation, you do a Liquid Lightning buff Wall of Elements, then the next one, Liquid Lightning damage Wall of Elements. Liquid Lightning buff Wall of Elements, Liquid Lightning damage Wall of Elements. You can switch it around, but that is only in a situation where you are really, really trusting your healers to keep you up because you will not have a heal. <clears throat> I personally wouldn't recommend it, but it's up to you. And you'll get a tiny bit more damage up. Now, I'm going to show you a demonstration on the skeleton. Remember, the skeleton isn't 100% accurate. So during the rotation that I'm doing, off balance sometimes doesn't fire when I want it to, so I get less damage. And sometimes the crits don't fire off, so you get less damage as well. But I'm going to show you a 38 nonetheless. So just consider that whatever I get could be more or could be less. However, inside a trial or dungeon situation, you're not on your own. You have debuffs applied more often. Um, you have other bonuses that you wouldn't normally have on your own, and you do a lot, lot more damage. The trick is, remember, however, when you are using this, stack up the enemies. Stack them up. If you do, your AoE is insane. So hopefully that helps, hopefully that wasn't too boring. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to run this particular build. The gear is not that difficult to get, especially if you run everything on normal and you can just upgrade the stuff yourself. Failing that, don't forget I did give you some other options and I will put that on the website as well. Now, this is quite complicated in terms of how it's constructed, but it's very easy to apply. So once you've got everything in place, just make sure you've got it right and you'll be just fine. Keep your wall of elements down, keep the enemies stacked up, and help the attack inside your wall of elements. Keep your buffs up, shield when you have to. You will be just fine. So, once again, thank you very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support, and if you are not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Don't forget, I'm also on Twitch streaming now as well as YouTube, so keep your eyes peeled for those. I will put a video update once, a, once in a while just to let you know where I am. 
Also, if you'd like to support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, and of course the website where all the guides are as well, zynodgaming.com. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I hope you're enjoying Somerset so far. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.